Hello and welcome to my channel Inch by Inch Art. Today I'm going to show you how I painted Trudy the Ruby Wormling, one of the gemstone dragons from MCDM Productions, Kingdoms and Warfare. The first thing I need to do is remove it from all of its packaging and cut each miniature body piece off from the excess plastic. I'm mostly using scissors to remove these. And there's still some more little sprues on it. I can just trim those off. Just testing the fit. And now I'm gonna go in with my X-Acto knife and remove some of the extra bits of plastic. So to attach the pieces together, I'm using super glue. I'm also speeding up the process by using baking soda. I just put a little bit of baking soda into the cavity and then I put super glue on the piece that I'm going to be applying and I press it together. Within a second it sets. Now that I've got all the pieces together, you can see where there's some pretty big gaps. I decided I wanted to fill these with green stuff. It's a two-part epoxy putty. You just mix the blue part with the yellow part until it becomes green. And then I recommend silicon sculpting tools or metal tools when trying to sculpt with green stuff. Fingers are fine, but you need to keep them wet. And you really want to keep your tools a little bit wet as well. Otherwise, green stuff can be quite tacky and won't go where you're trying to put it. Once I apply it, I just use my silicon sculpting tool to press it in really firmly into the cracks. And then I use my metal tool and other sculpting tools to try and match the texture of the creature in that area so that it looks more natural. Now that the green stuff is cured, it's time to paint. Here you can see I'm using Vallejo Mecha Varnish. It's a white acrylic primer. 
I'm just going to be putting a thin base coat on before I start painting the miniature. These are my acrylic Rust-Oleum paints. I actually don't end up using the white. I chose this paint because this red is the most vibrant red that I have. I'm putting a good thick wet coat on with my fluffier brush to make sure that it gets into every nook and cranny. And here you can see that I've decided to go with my red acrylic Vallejo paint. The reason I'm doing a coat of this is actually the Rust-Oleum was too glossy and I didn't like how it looked, so I do a fairly wet coat over the Rust-Oleum with the Vallejo because it's matte and that was the look I wanted. Here are all of my smallest brushes and I'm going to be using each of these to finish painting. And I'm just mixing white and red Vallejo acrylic paint together to get a few different shades of red and pink. I'm attempting to paint on the effect that I think rubies or have seen crystals have. I just wanted the gemstones that are on the wormling to clearly look different than the rest of the body. keep getting lighter and lighter with my colors until I get to the point where I'm at a white dry brush to just do the tips and edges and really give it that lighter kind of shimmering or transparent effect. So I recently purchased Culture Hustle's liquid mirror paint in a bottle. I am not going to do an in-depth review of the paint. There's plenty of other YouTubers that have done that. Super Ray Dizzle did a good one. I will link to it in the description box below if anybody wants to check that out. But as you can see, this paint is extremely reflective. It's very, very silver. It does have a bit of a smell to it and I've never used it before. This is the first time I've purchased from Culture Hustle. I did get a couple other things that are pretty fun like really vibrant neon pigment paints that glow in the dark and one of their blackest black paints but I will show you those in another video. So I just decided that I wanted to do something different for the Wormling for its eyes and I thought using this paint could be fun. Once the silver eye paint has dried I'm going to do a black wash. This is a pretty thin wash and I'm just going to do it all over. It'll help boost the contrast and show off the detail of this miniature. Now that the majority of the painting is done, I'm going to use my E6000 Jewelers Glue to secure the Wormling down to its base. So for something fun and different, I decided to use these Angelina Flakes. I'm just using PVA glue to glue it onto the miniature. I thought it would be cool if it was the inside of her wings, so I'm just gluing little pieces that fit in the wing folds on the bottom. It was actually really tricky to do this and took me quite a while, but I think it was worth it. I love the little shimmer. It's quite eye-catching.
This is Blue Russet Mica Powder. I was just trying to find ways to make the red look a little bit different and give it a bit more dynamics. It is all red, so it was a bit tricky and I wanted to be true to Ruby, but I don't have any rubies lying around my house and I had to paint it, so I figured if it was glittery and red and a slightly different tone of red, it would help the piece stand out a bit more. And here on the tip of a toothpick, I have a little dot of black acrylic paint and I'm using that to dot the eyes. <laughs> I'm doing some more black wash. This is a much smaller brush and I have a more ink heavy wash. The reason I'm doing this is because I wanna build the contrast up slowly and control exactly where it's going. So I did about three coats of this in varying degrees where I basically just make it a darker and darker where there should be shadow. And since it's all red, I decided to give her black claws, because why not? I lost the footage of decorating her base, so this is just to show you the materials I used. PVA glue, glitter, these little stick-on rhinestone gem things, and a bit of E6000 glue, some fingernail decal gemmy things, and I forgot to show them, but I also did have some polished small red stones. If you'd like to see more of me making my art, painting, and modifying miniatures, please like, follow, and subscribe.